In this lecture on uh, optical lithography, we are going to uh, look at uh, mask technology. So far, uh, we looked at uh, the imaging process, the resist process, and how to create the patterns on the resist, right, using the image formation technique uh, that we explored uh, in the few uh, lectures earlier. So now we would like to see um, how these masks are make, made. Uh, masks is repeatedly used in this optical lithography and uh, we need to understand uh, what kind of technology is used to make this mask and what are the specifications of this uh, mask uh, layer. So this is just to recap uh, what we are uh, discussing here. Uh, in the projection lithography system, mask is the primary element. Uh, that has the, uh, all the circuit or desired uh, patterns that we would like to uh, project onto the wafer. So it is uh, basically a template, right? So we can do n number of times uh, without causing any damage uh, in this particular uh, scheme. But in um, uh, uh, contact lithography, uh, you are going to make this mask uh, come into contact with the wafer, right? So. Uh, irrespective of whether you are using projection lithography or uh, contact lithography, uh, the mask patterns are nothing but templates with uh, desired circuit patterns. So it allows us to replicate uh, the structure on the on the wafer, and you want to have high throughput. That's the that's a primary idea of using a mask uh, instead of uh, writing right each and every uh, structures that you uh, want to have on the mask. Um, and there are two things, right? So it should uh, have a transparent uh, uh, region and also opaque region, right? So the mask should have transparent and op opaque regions uh, that will define um, uh, the structure, right? And the mask should be defect free, right? Uh, we only want the structures that we uh, want and we don't want any um, additional features on the mask. And this, this is what we call uh, defects, right? And the defect could be either from particle or some cracks on the mask and some transparency issue, you know, the place where you want it to be opaque. Uh, if it is transparent, then that is also a defect on the mask. And then roughness, right? So ideally, you want uh, a line to be uh, very smooth, right? Uh, an iridescent line, let's say. But then if, you're, if your mask has roughness, then this roughness will be transported to your uh, wafer as well. So all these are considered to be defects, right? So we should have a defect free uh, mask layer. And the other thing is we don't want any artifact or undesirable distortion, right? Transferred from the mask onto the wafer. So there are multiple artifacts, right? Uh, it can be, you know, uh, structures that are undesirable which are sitting there, which is not developed properly and there are no uh, uh, precise edges defined. So these are all the things that will create uh, undesirable distortion on the image that you want. So in uh, optical lithography, this photo mask is used to transfer the pattern, right? But then we want to understand how we make this mask, right? So how these masks are made and what are all these properties of masks. So that is going to be the topic for this lecture. So this is a, you know, a, a, a GDS file, right? Uh, or you can say a design file uh, that has a lot of features. Right? So we have a circuit here uh, with the different colors showing different layers in lithography. And this is uh, the design that any uh, circuit designer will come up with, right? Uh, and he has this circuits there. And we want to transfer this uh, circuits onto the wafer. But uh, there are some interesting features on this mask, right? We saw earlier that we want to align the masks, right, uh, of different layers. And we use some 
alignment structures right so this is a, a zoomed uh, in um, uh, picture where uh, it shows this crosses and boxes right we saw earlier how do we align it right so we saw alignment of this cross with this uh, type of structure between two different layers that should give us an alignment between two different layers so this is also put on this mask and then at the edges of the mask you will see features like this right so there are some line space features which we can use as a metrology structure. So we cannot measure each and every circuit that we make, right? Each and every device we make, we, it is impossible to measure those. So what we do is we put some uh, measurement structures at this uh, uh, edges, right? What we call scribe line. So these edges could be used um, for measurement of the structure. So since we are eliminating the whole mask with the, with the same amount of energy, you expect the structure on the scribe line or the edges also uh, yield the same dimension as you have on the uh, center of the mask as well. All right. So let's look at uh, the process of making this mask. Right. The first thing is the design. As a designer, you come up with the circuit pattern or any kind of design desired pattern uh, but primarily you you use some EDA tools right so you you, you use a EDA tool uh, to uh, come up with this design and uh, you will use patterns right um, defined as a hierarchical structure right it depends on the strategy people use what I mean by hierarchical structure here is you define a a simple square right and if I want to uh, draw any pattern for instance if I want to draw a circular pattern like this so what I would use is I will use this uh, 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 square to arrange it in a certain fashion so now I'm using uh, the primitive here to define my uh, uh, a ring here or let's say I'm drawing a line so I can use this primitive to draw these kind of features. So this will allow you to reduce your overhead on your design, right? And it de depends on the design strategies. This is one way of doing it. And when you design it, you get a certain format, GDS or OSS format is the format of the file that you get, right? So now this is all uh, uh, designed, right? It, you, you, you can look it up in your uh, um, uh, screen, uh, in your EDA tool, it will be a two dimensional structure, right? So it will have some lines, right, or door, or um, holes, right. So this is what you will see. So now you want to translate this onto the wafer, but before that, you want to do some Boolean operations, right, in order to make or create desired structures. Right? There are multiple ways to do that. So this Boolean operation is uh, is is done uh, either by the designer or during data preparation so normally these boolean operations are uh, you know um, uh, opaque to the designer so this designer uh, work ends here in providing the gds to the uh, uh, lithography team or the mask prep team and this mask preparation team will you know look at uh, the data and then they will do boolean in order to get desired structure so what what do we mean by boolean so for instance I want to draw a line like this, right? So as a designer, you will draw a line. But then if the mask is uh, is dark field or light field, we look at it in, in uh, briefly what this bright field and dark field means. So I want to have an opening here, right? And then I want a opaque regions all over, right? So you only design this line, right? So how do we go from this layer to this, uh, this layer, right? So how do we do that? So this is where the Boolean comes in. So Boolean here could be an uh, uh, AND operation. So if you do a AND between the structure and then a large patch, so what you will get is something uh, like this, right? So these Boolean operations are done by the mask preparation team. And then the, uh, the, the mask preparation team also, you know, converts the data format, right? So the GDS uh, is, the, is the design format that you give. This is the graphic design system format. And uh, they will convert that into a different pattern generator or the file format uh, that is required to write the mask, right? So once this uh, data preparation is done and the file is sent to the mask shop, right? 
and this mask shop is the one that's going to make the mask for you and this is the stage what we call tape out right so once you design and then you send all your designs after with an appropriate mask uh, file format to the mask shop we call that as a tape out phase so once the tape out is done then the mask is uh, mask file is sent to the mask shop right and there uh, it goes through uh, various fabrication steps and this is a summary of it so the mask preparation is done and then we take a blank mask right so we want to make transparent and opaque regions right so we take a substrate and the substrate is covered with let's say in this case a chromium layer right which is opaque right it's a blanket layer so this is what we call blank mask and then we do exposure this is similar to lithography right and this mask layer will have a, a resist right so this could be uh, let's say a photo definable material this should be a photo resist and then we expose this in a minute we will see how we expose this without using uh, a lithography step um, in, in particular projection lithography step we expose it right and then we do the resist development resist d scum so d scum is nothing but clearing out any um, uh, resist that is uh, undeveloped right sitting at the bottom right so we remove that using d scum and now is chrome etching right so we etch the chrome now so we remove the chrome underneath right and then that should uh, give you uh, a, a nice pattern or opaque uh, regions are defined and then you define a transparent region here considering this is uh, glass right and then we strip the photoresist we clean the mask we characterize it. this is very very important step we characterize the mask we measure all the uh, uh, critical dimensions uh, that is given as a specification we characterize this mask and then if there are some uh, issues with the mask we repair it right it is possible to repair defects and that is the, uh, also done um, without you know uh, redoing all the steps there is a repair step and then after repair you clean it again you characterize it right you want to make sure your repair has worked or not once the repair is done you add a pellicle that is a protection layer that you put and then you deliver the mask okay in some cases um, at this step you will find out that your repair has not worked or even in, at this step in the previous characterization step you have found out that your mask is completely out of specification so what you do is you start from this process again so there is no way to rework this mask so this is one of the reasons why if the specifications are very tight you are asking for you know uh, critical dimension variation within uh, less than one percentage or critical dimension uh, very close to the resolution limit of the mask process uh, your mask will be very expensive that expense comes from this process that we have to repeat and get the required uh, critical dimension or specification so um, so the mask plates this is a, a typical image of, of a mask plate uh, this is the mask plate from uh, nano science department here at uh, IISC so here uh, engineer is holding a mask plate and here you can see the chrome and you can see those openings right those are all the transparent region so where the light can go through and this mask plate can be made out of either quartz or you know soda lime so both are transparent uh, uh, in, in the region of interest um, and the sizes can vary so the mask plate size varies based on the tools that uh, uh, one uses right and the circuit one want to uh, uh, define and the thickness of the substrate also uh, can be uh, different because as you go for larger mask plate you want a mechanical strength to that uh, plate right so you naturally go for thicker film and this is the reason why we choose a different substrate material uh, soda lime is a very commonly used uh, uh, substrate material in academia and in industry as well if your illumination wavelength is eye line right so if you are operating 
uh, at a longer wavelength, right? So, you do not uh, really worry about uh, the absorption. So, soda lime is transparent, right? So, this is the transmission. But then, if you are uh, looking at uh, deep UV patterning, you want to use uh, quartz because the absorption of uh, uh, soda lime gas increases, that means the transparency goes down, right. So, you want the material to be transparent, right, uh, when you are using uh, deep UV. And in that case, we use quartz glass, okay. However, your uh, quartz glass are slightly expensive uh, compared to soda lime, but it is it's, it's a, it's a you know trade off that one need to uh, make. If you want higher resolution, you should be ready to pay a little bit more. And this is how uh, we fabricate uh, uh, the mask and you can see here we already discussed this, this is captured in this uh, uh, process flow. You have this uh, photo mask substrate already coated with uh, uh, your uh, photo resist and then you illuminate it with light, right. This light could be either LED, laser or sometimes it could be electron beam, right. So, these are all the illumination uh, that one can do and uh, we write it uh, as a process, right. We do not uh, print it, this is a writing process and then we do the development. When you do the development, um, you remove the photoresist and you expose the chromium layer and the exposed chromium layer is removed using chromium edge and then this resist is also removed and this is your final mask. And this is the mask writing uh, process, right, or the writing tool we use, right. So, you can see here the engineer is holding uh, a resist coated mask, right, uh, with chrome and then uh, the design is fed into this, uh, the, the writing uh, machine here and uh, once you load uh, the wafer or uh, the mask into the mask plate into the machine, it will start uh, printing, uh, writing this um, uh, layer onto the uh, photo uh, sensitive layer there. So, your uh, this is called a maskless lithography. Sometimes you can use this uh, particular writing process to directly define patterns, right. So, here we are using it to write mask, but if you have, if your circuit has a, a polymer, right, if you want to define a polymer. Um, you can use this writer as a direct maskless lithography process. In this particular uh, litho, uh, you can use um, LED or laser or for advanced CMOS uh, mask, we use electron beam lithography. The reason for that is LED and laser will not give you the required dimension. So, here you can do close to you know um, 0 0.8 uh, micrometer or so, let us say. Uh, but if you want to go to um, uh, sub uh, micron or sub nanometer scale, uh, you need to use electron beam uh, lithography. And this is the pattern on the mask. Once you write it and develop it, you can see here, uh, this is the chrome pattern, right, uh, the edges and inside and then you can look at the transparent as well, right. So, light will pass through this region and then light will be arrested in this region, right. And uh, this is another type of mask where we predominantly see chrome and then small openings, right. This is on the right side uh, that you see. On the left side, you see a lot of transparent region and then the, the opaque regions are less, right. So, we classify this into two groups. One is called bright field and another one is dark field when the amount of light passing through, right, so this is open and this is your opaque, right, region. So, if the opaque region is uh, much, much less than the open region, we call this as bright field, right, and the dark field meaning you have very uh, small amount of area where light gets through. Okay. So, there is direct implication of either uh, your mask is dark field or light field. We will look at that in, a, uh, in the next uh, lecture. So, pellicle, right, as I mentioned, pellicle is a protective layer, right. Let us look at the left side image where you have mask without a pellicle or protection, right. So, uh, this is a, a rough imaging optics, right. So, you have the pattern in this plane, right, and then you reproduce it on the wafer, right. So, uh, let us assume that there is a 
a defect or some dust particle you know uh, accumulated on this mask so what will happen that this the dust particle will be imaged on the wafer as well so if there are some dust particles here that will be imaged on the wa uh, wafer as well so if you have uh, 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 open mask it will anyway collect dust i mean though we use clean room for fabricating uh, these uh, devices um, but over time you could have one or two particle contamination come and stick onto the uh, onto your uh, wave uh, mask and it is very hard to remove if it is uh, stuck onto the uh, mask right so that is the reason why for most of the industrial process we use pellicle right pellicle is a transparent protective layer on top of the mask right and this is all transparent but what will happen now if a dust particle comes and sit on this pellicle it won't be imaged right because it is not in the focal plane so the focal plane is something like this right so you are now focusing your structure onto the wafer but now the the dust that is sitting on the surface of the pellicle will not be imaged it will be out of focus so this is how you keep the image of the dust particle out of focus from the wafer itself so that you can avoid you know all these uh, defects getting imaged onto the wafer okay uh, so this adds a additional complexity as you can see you need to protect it so make sure it is tightly sealed as well you don't want any uh, particles going inside it will be nicely sealed so that you avoid any damage or any contamination created to this mask so the whatever we discussed uh, so far is a very simple mask right what we call binary mask right you have uh, binary meaning transparent and not transparent right so there is complete arrest of transparency and there is no transparency so this is what we call a binary mask right where we use uh, uh, chrome and no chrome but there are some advanced mask technologies something called phase shift mask we don't use uh, you know chrome to arrest uh, uh, the light propagation we use phase right and there is alternate phase shift mask and then there is embedded attenuated alternate phase shift mask that is again another different type and there is reflective mask as well so so far we discussed about transmission type mask right so light is transmitted but uh, in extreme uv right that is the technology that's being explored for uh, sub 10 nanometer uh, technology where the mask is not any more transparent uh, uh, structure anymore right so you are using a a reflective mask so you make a mask and you illuminate it with the light source and then there is a reflection right and this reflected uh, uh, optical beam contains the mask details right it's not any more transparent transparent so we will look at uh, all these different type of masks and their um, interesting um, uh, working principle in resolution enhancement uh, technique right so with this uh, we come to uh, end of uh, uh, how we uh, make mask uh, right and uh, what are all the important uh, features of this mask one should take care of uh, it is uh, fabricated similar to uh, the way that we transfer uh, image onto the wafer the only difference is we don't do printing here right printing always requires a template so here we use a, a writing process so either we use an led a focused led or a laser a focused laser uh, to write uh, patterns on this uh, resist coated mask and in advanced lithography uh, masks where your structures are very small we use electron beam lithography so you might wonder uh, how you will use laser to uh, write 100 nanometer pattern for instance or even uh, smaller features right so the reason for that is we have this magnification if you remember uh, in projection lithography your masks dimension the size of the patterns on the mask are four or five times larger than the features that you want to write so for instance if you want to write a 100 nanometer line your mask will be either 400 or 500 
So that is uh, within the limit of your laser uh, beam that can be focused and written, right? So there are uh, other resolution techniques one can use. And also for uh, really uh, smaller dimension, we can use electron beam lithography, right? So we have a separate session on electron beam lithography. The only difference is electron as a much smaller wavelength so that you can have a much finer features uh, written with this electron beam. So I hope you um, understood um, uh, the importance of this uh, mass technology and how we make this mask and how we protect this mask and also how we you know negotiate the the problem of uh, dust collected on this mask by using this pellicle all right so uh, in the following uh, uh, classes we will look at uh, you know uh, different type of um, optical uh, litho uh, processes pertaining to you know other kind of lithographies and how we uh, enhance the resolution as well